Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to my top 25 cards from Phyrexia, all will be one for standard. Starting with Koth, Fire of Resistance, the new 4-mana Planeswalker wants to be played in a mono-red deck and the more controlling the better, as a deck with a high curve will be able to make good use of the extra lands we search up with the plus 2 ability. The minus 3 is scalable removal, while the minus 7 emblem, which we can get to pretty quickly, can also be game-winning. Next up is Sword of Forge and Frontier to help complete the cycle of swords. 3 mana to play and 2 to equip to give plus 2 plus 2 and in this case protection from red and from green. And then whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player we get to exile the top 2 cards of our library and we may play those cards this turn in addition to playing an extra land so it can be a great source of card advantage. While protection from black and from white probably would have been more useful in the current standard, this sword still packs a punch. While it's an investment to get it online, there are a few tools to help equip it, such as Danatha and Astor, so those are cards I would be looking to build around. Unctus Grand Metatact is a 3-mana 2-4 legendary artifact creature, giving other artifact creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, while also saying other blue creatures we control that become tapped, let us draw and then discard, and then for either 1 blue mana or 2 life, we can also turn any of our creatures into a blue artifact. So it's a lord for artifacts that gives additional card selection, so this will slot in nicely with some of the artifact synergies from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, so this could potentially revitalize that archetype alongside a slew of new artifact creatures in this set. Glissa Sunslayer is a 3 mana 3-3 three, three with First Strike and Death Touch, so it's very difficult to take out Glissa in combat, as this combination of keywords is a headache to get past. And whenever Glissa deals combat damage to a player, we either draw a card at the cost of one life, destroy an enchantment, or remove three counters from target permanent, which can also be an answer to opposing planeswalkers. So all in all, great stats with some useful abilities if you decide you no longer need to play defense with Glissa. Venerated Rot Priest is a 1 mana 1 2, featuring the new Toxic ability, where if a creature with Toxic deals damage to an opponent, that player will also receive a poison counter, and it only takes 10 of those counters to take out an opponent. And whenever a creature we control becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter. So this could work well with pump spells, but it will also trigger if the opponent tries to take out our creatures with spot removal. So if a poison deck ends up doing well in standard, this will no doubt be an important part of it. Mind Splice Apparatus is a 4 mana artifact with flash, which will pick up an extra oil counter at the beginning of our upkeep, and then instant and sorcery spells we cast get a 1 mana discount for each oil counter on the apparatus. So while we have to take a turn off to deploy the apparatus, it will quickly make up for it by discounting all our spells, as we can easily build our deck around it. And in a way it reminds me of cards like Fires of Invention and Wilderness Reclamation, an engine card that will overwhelm the opponent with a mana advantage over time. So this having flash also means it will work well both with and against counter spells, as we don't need to tap out to cast it in the first place. Dragonwing Glider is a 5 mana equipment featuring the new 4 Mirrodin mechanic, which generates a 2 2 red rebel creature token before attaching the equipment to it. And in this case, the equipment grants plus 2 plus 2, flying, and haste. So we end up with a 4 4 flyer with haste. And then once the opponent deals with our initial creature, we still have the equipment left over, which can be re equipped for 5 mana. This will shine in low curve red aggressive decks, where this is a great curve topper, giving us a late game mana sink that turns every single creature into a scary threat. Next up is another planeswalker, Kaya Intangible Slayer, has a hefty price tag at 7 mana, but the abilities make up for it, plus 2 to drain the opponent for 3 while gaining the same amount of life, the 0 ability lets us draw 2 cards while letting the opponent scry 1 in return, and finally the minus 3 can exile a creature or enchantment, creating a 1-1 spirit creature token for us with the same abilities as the exiled card. 
Kaya also has hexproof, so she can be taken out by removal very easily. So the abilities here are undoubtedly powerful. The main challenge is resolving a 7 mana card. So this will be at its best in a control deck that can prolong the game, or maybe in a combo deck that can reanimate Kaya from the graveyard, thinking of cards like Invoke Justice to get it in play for 5 mana as opposed to 7. Luka is back in completed form, allowing us to cast this Planeswalker for either 5 mana or 4 mana and 2 life with 2 fewer loyalty counters. The plus 1 ability generates red and green mana that we can use to cast creatures or activate their abilities. The minus 1 creates a 3-3 beast token with toxic 1. And then finally the minus 4 deals X damage divided as we choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers where X is the greatest power among creatures we controlled as we activated this ability, meaning we don't get blown out if the opponent removes our largest creature in response to the minus 4 ability. So a well-rounded Planeswalker that will shine in creature decks with plenty of 2 drops and 7 drops, given how the math works out with the plus 1 ability. Annex Sentry is a 3 mana 1-4 artifact creature with toxic 1, and more importantly it exiles a creature or artifact with mana value 3 or less for as long as it stays in play. Perfect for exiling creature tokens from Fable of the Mirror Breaker, as those will stay exiled, and it also offers an alternative to Brutal Cathar that we haven't really seen since Skyclave Apparition was still in standard. So while it's limited to lower mana values, it does come with a lot of extra toughness to make up for it, so it will be great against red decks that won't be able to take it out very easily. Speaking of red decks, our next card is Solfim Mayhem Dominus. This 4 mana legendary creature is a 5-4 that doubles our non-combat damage, perfect alongside burn spells and creatures like Thermo Alchemist. Keep in mind that if you want to combine this with Mechanized Warfare, since both of these are replacement effects, the opponent affected by the damage will get to decide in which order these effects are applied, so your Lightning Strike will only deal 7 damage instead of 8 if you have both in play. Solfem can also become indestructible, so sometimes it can be worth it to wait until we have 5 mana to play Solfem and then make it indestructible by discarding 2 cards and in this case paying 4 life to the Phyrexian mana. A steep cost, but in some matchups it may be worth it. Phyrexian Vindicator is the nemesis of red decks, as this 4 mana 5 5 flyer prevents all damage that would be dealt to it while redirecting it to any other target. The quadruple white cost makes it difficult to play outside of a mono white deck, but it's tempting to try and combine it with red sweepers or maybe green fight spells, like we've done with similar creatures in the past. It can be underwhelming in other matchups, as it doesn't really have an immediate effect as it enters the battlefield, so play it accordingly. Thrun is back, and now as the Breaker of Silence, the 5 mana Legendary Troll is a 5 5 Trampler that cannot be countered. It also cannot be the target of non green spells or abilities your opponents control, which is as close as we're going to get to Hexproof. And during our turn, Thrun is indestructible. So there aren't too many cards out there that cleanly take care of Thrun, and it will be a thorn in the side of mono blue decks. Interestingly, it could also play well alongside your own sweepers, as it can survive them. Speaking of sweepers, our next card is White Sun's Twilight. While all the Twilight cards have constructed potential, this one stood out to me. X and double white to gain X life, create X Phyrexian Might creature tokens, and more importantly, if X is 5 or more, we get to destroy all other creatures. So this is both a board wipe and a win condition in a deck that can generate enough mana. While Farewell remains unmatched in its versatility, this could be a powerful new tool in the arsenal of white control decks. Bloated Contaminator is a 3 mana 4 4 Trampler with Toxic 1, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we get to proliferate, meaning we can maybe generate additional plus 1 counters or the new oil counters, while also adding more poison counters to the opponent, which we can conveniently generate thanks to the Toxic mechanic. Another important tool for the poison decks, but could also be great in a more traditional stompy deck, where it will also play well with a new evolving adaptive, a new take on Pelt Collector. Phyrexian Obliterator is back, now making it legal in Explorer. Very similar to the Phyrexian Vindicator, it excels when facing red or green decks, which don't have a great answer to it. The real question is whether this will overtake Shieldred as the default option at 4 mana in mono black decks. Obliterator really shines if you can combine it with fight effects to decimate the opponent's board, and there should be enough black-green dual lands and standards to make that work. 
And next on our list we have another unassuming uncommon, but ossification is the real deal. A 2 mana aura that enchants one of our basic lands to then exile an opposing creature or planeswalker an opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Quite the upgrade over some of the 3 mana options like Borrowed Time for the various enchantment decks, although you probably won't be able to play it outside of a 1 or 2 colored deck due to the basic land restriction. Can easily see this making a splash in control decks, although they might have to give up on Farewell, which can be a bit of a number with it. Mondrak is another 4 mana legendary Phyrexian, a 4 4 creature that doubles our token production, which applies to both creature tokens as well as non creature tokens like treasures, for instance. And as part of the cycle, it can also become indestructible, this time by sacrificing two other artifacts and or creatures. Should not be too difficult to set up a board where we can immediately protect Mondrak by having some tokens in play already, and then we can immediately reap the rewards for future tokens without having to worry about removal as much. Wedding announcement just got a new best friend. Phyrexian Arena gets its first standard legal reprint in almost 20 years, and I expect it to still be very relevant. While opposing copies of Invoke Despair are a concern, this will be a cornerstone of black control strategies going forward. Shieldred can make up for the lost life, and the rest of your deck can be packed with answers, while Phyrexian Arena pulls you ahead. The story depicted in the art and flavor text is just a cherry on top. Nissa has been completed into the Ascended Animist, allowing us to cast her for 5, 6 or 7 mana. The plus 1 can generate a large token depending on her loyalty, whereas the minus 1 destroys an artifact or enchantment. And finally, the minus 7 could even be used right away to give the team plus 1 plus 1 and trample for each forest we control. So a mono green deck with a few mana elves is going to be the best home for this new Planeswalker. Next up is Vraska, Betrayal's Sting, which can be cast for 6 mana or 5 mana and 2 life. The zero ability is really a plus one, as we get to proliferate an additional loyalty counter onto our planeswalkers, in addition to drawing a card at the cost of one life. The minus two is removal for opposing creatures, turning them into treasures that can be sacrificed for one mana. Could even use it on our own creatures if we need an extra mana in a pinch. And the minus nine ultimate is a quick way to get a poison victory, especially if you can follow it up with a second copy of Vraska to proliferate for the win. Atraxa Grand Unifier is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch and Life Link. And when Atraxa enters the battlefield, we get to look at the top 10 cards of our library to find a card for each card type and put it into our hand. So it should not be too difficult to play this in a rampy control deck that has a good mix of lands, creatures, instants, sorceries, artifacts, enchantments and planeswalkers to get the most out of Atraxa. Reminds me of Niv-Mizzet Reborn, and while the cost here is higher, the restriction is also a lot easier to build around, and Atraxa does not have to be a 4-off for the deck to be functional. At number 3 we have the Eternal Wanderer, a 6 mana planeswalker with a unique passive ability that limits the number of creatures that can attack it. The plus 1 ability can flicker any artifact or creature, so this can both re-enable an enter the battlefield ability, or it can take an opposing creature out of commission for an entire turn cycle. And then the zero ability creates a 2-2 samurai token with a double strike, and the minus four is a pseudo sweeper, removing all but one creature of our choice for either player. And since we're sacrificing creatures instead of destroying them, this can also get around indestructible effects. The perfect curve topper for a controlling white deck. At number two, we have the new cycle of fast lands that have finally been reprinted in standard and now also legal in Explorer. These are at their best in aggro decks with a low curve, as opposed to the current cycle of dual lands from Innistrad. Especially a land like Copperline Gorge will be a huge boon for red-green beatdown decks that might have one drops in both colors that want to be cast early. These may still show up in smaller numbers in some of the three color decks alongside the pain lands and Innistrad duels, but as a rule of thumb, I would not prioritize them in your deck if it doesn't have any one drops that need to be cast early. And my number one pick is Capricious Hellraiser. This 6 mana 4 4 Flying Dragon could get a 3 mana discount if we have 9 or more cards in our graveyard. Once it enters the battlefield, we exile 3 cards at random from our graveyard, and we get to choose a non creature, non land card from among them and cast it for free. 
There are a lot of ways to build around the Hellraiser, including maybe a combo approach that tries to cast some very expensive spells for free, but given the random nature of the ETB effect, I would be looking to maybe play this in a mid-range shell that has a good number of cantrips that put additional cards into our graveyard to quickly enable a 3-mana dragon. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is already one of the best cards in Standard, and it plays very well with the Hellraiser as both an enabler and a payoff. Copying Hellraiser with Reflection should be a good time. So this concludes my top 25 list of cards from the upcoming set. Agree or disagree, let me know in the comments and be on the lookout for gameplay videos showing these new cards later this week. But for now I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.